morning, REC insiders, and good morning to our entire audience uh, across the social media platforms. Um, it, we are uh, reporting today uh, an REC insight, and I have none other than our very own Director of Operations, Robert Pume, with us today, uh, who is an investor, uh, a landlord, um, and uh, somebody who's been in real estate, you know, the, kind of the, his entire life. Uh, I'm also very, very uh, excited that we have, it's a very timely uh, issue that we're going to be talking about today. And I have Kayla A. Andrade with Ontario Landlord Watch uh, with us. They're based out of Cambridge, Ontario. Uh, welcome, Kayla. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, and welcome, Robert. Um, what I wanted to really discuss today, guys, and, uh, and, and I want to get into a few things, is... COVID-19 uh, is now with us. We've, we're kind of two weeks into this thing. Um, and there's a lot of discussions and there's a lot of buzz around key items. Um, this insight is geared towards tenants and landlords. Because it's not just about a landlord matter. It's about tenants and landlords. So we're going through an unprecedented time um, there is no, there is no precedent. We're in uncharted waters, and and basically, um, we're trying to navigate a health crisis that's affecting people's lives, both from an employment standpoint, a health standpoint, uh, and we're trying to really project and navigate through what can be an economic disaster if it's not managed properly. So there's a lot of anxiety in the marketplace, and especially in our community. Uh, we are a real estate uh, consultancy group. Uh, we do real estate sales. We do investor uh, advisory and consultation. We build out portfolios for people. And we're getting, if I were to tell you, dozens to hundreds of inquiries uh, over the last couple of weeks uh, with people concerned on, uh, I'm a tenant. Do I pay my rent? I'm a landlord. Am I going to get paid? I heard uh, that people don't have to pay the rent and they cannot be evicted. So there's a whole bunch of questions out there right now uh, that are making both tenants and landlords very anxious. Uh, and that's what I wanted to shed some light on. Um, Kayla, I'm going to start with you. You're with the Ontario Landlords Watch. Tell me a little bit about Ontario Landlords Watch. So Ontario Landlords Watch is a closed Facebook group on Facebook. We meet once a year in Cambridge for a annual meeting. It is, uh, our members consist of landlords, property managers, paralegals, real estate agents who uh, understand the Residential and Tenancy Act, the Landlord and Tenant Board, and we support each other through the day-to-day -day operations. So we advocate for changes at the provincial level as well as municipal. But our main goal is to teach uh, our members about what is happening in the political side of real estate and teach them how to advocate for this industry, not only for themselves, but for their customers, which are the tenants. Awesome. Bobby, tell me a little bit about your experience as an investor. How many doors do you have, buddy? Uh, so we have six doors under our belts. That's my, my girlfriend and I. Uh, we also have a small property management company that takes on a total of about 30 doors. Um, so it's sort of an all encompassing thing with us. It's we've hinged a bunch of our investment dollars on real estate. Uh, we also help others to make sure that they are secure in doing the same. So you personally are responsible for putting six doors in Ontario's economy where people, yep. so you're a housing provider. Uh, because yes, what I want to do in this is I also want to clean up the language a little bit of uh, because landlords and during a time like this, like there can be a bad connotation of who is not empathetic and all this kind of emotion around it. So, so Bobby, you're a housing provider. I know I'm a housing provider and how many doors uh, that, that I run. Kayla, are you also an investor in landlord? I have. I, I've been a landlord for the last 17 years and I have a total of 18 doors. Okay. So, so we're not talking, so you're not a large corporation. You're, you're not a, a massive real estate investment trust with 5,000 doors. You have 18 doors to your name. It's taken you 17 years to get there. Yes. So would it be safe to assume that this is your nest egg in the way that you look at running your life? It's my retirement plan, for sure. It's, for sure. It's, 
It doesn't come. Uh, it doesn't come easy. My husband does a lot of our our work, and I stay home with our four children. Okay. So so God bless your family. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys are staying safe. So would you say that you're anxious as to what's going to happen in the next few days, April first? How many checks are actually going to come in? Well, right now, a lot of people will start talking about April 1st, and a lot of people are nervous about April 1st. And from speaking with my tenants, I don't think April 1st is that deadline of crisis for them. May 1st and onwards is going to be the crisis mode. Um, that's why for the elected officials, they, they say, you know, April 1st is coming. People need their funds. Um, but again, landlords are prepared to work with our tenants and through this type of crisis, but it's gonna be based on their finances. So if a landlord is financially uh, doing well off, they can indeed wait. Um, but again, the social media and, and our news presses, they would, they would say that there's deferrals for these mortgage payments. And that's where a lot of misconception comes from is that not all investors uh, can apply to have their mortgage deferred. And even if they could, we still have the problem that the money still needs to be due and since the landlord and tenant board was already in a massive chaos or crisis, it's actually going to be an uh, amount of chaos that's going to happen after the pandemic. And that's why it's very crucial that we act now uh, so that we can prepare what the housing industry looks like after the pandemic. Is the landlord and tenant board open right now? The landlord and tenant board is accepting applications for illegal acts or safety. Now, if they're hearing applications through the phone for just those two applications, there's still no enforcement because the government has stated that they are holding evictions and there's no enforcement for any application. And you can't even apply to have a non-payment of rent application at the board at this time. Okay. Um, what I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna make this very clear, is during this pandemic the number in the the, the, the number of unemployment because now we're talking unemployment we're not talking about layoffs or people who are working from home so i'm going to say that a cool 90 percent of the people two weeks ago that were working a cool 90 percent is either laid off or still working the unemployment rate in the united states i don't have the same number for canada is at about 10 percent right now it went up three four percent so it went to 10%. I don't want to focus on the on the 5 to 10%. Because that's real and that's normal. If you are a landlord and your tenant is out of a job during this crisis and everything else, it is prudent that we all do our very best to work with what we have. I'm far more concerned about the misconceptions in the marketplace for the other 90%. Meaning yeah. if you got laid off and your income went down by 60%, so be it. This is a pandemic and we're all gonna get hurt. Every single one of our businesses is gonna get hurt. But to the tenant, you still have to make ends meet. Your landlord still needs to pay their mortgage. If you need to call your landlord and work with your landlord, if you are a landlord and you need to call your tenant to check in, are you and your family safe? Have you been impacted uh, negatively due to work? If somebody were to call me and I would say, yes, my business went down by 80%, I'm gonna have some tough times ahead. But my mortgage is coming out. The tenant, if they were impacted and their income is now down by 40% and they're on EI or they're on a special package, maybe as a landlord, I need to be empathetic and I need to consider uh, taking payments over a structured amount of time working with them but what cannot happen is a notion in the marketplace that because of COVID, i don't need to pay the rent and this is not my problem this is the government's problem and the landlord is now left left hung to dry with deferrals fees uh mortgage payment defaulting and all the things that go with it which is going to create a disaster in the marketplace not only for the landlord but I think it will take doors off the market in a market that already is at 1% vacancy or less. Mm -hmm. If landlords have to take their doors off the market, the city of Toronto, for example, and I'm just going to use Toronto because we, we live here. This is where we practice. We were sitting at 0.6% vacancy two weeks ago. If any of this inventory gets compromised, 
if landlords have to sell their properties, if any of this housing gets compromised, we are going to be in a world of hurt. You're going to further stress the, the rest of the inventory and prices are going to skyrocket completely out of control. Kayla, tell us a little bit about that. It's going to be what we have to see the need of people right now before the pandemic. It's all about housing. It's about affordable housing. We kept asking ourselves, do we have an affordable housing crisis or is this a supply and demand issue? We like to look at the way that the government is managing their own social housing, how they're trying to create social housing. And for us, we really try to see what's happening in the Waterloo region where you know they're taking $12.7 million of prov provincial, federal, municipal and crowdfunding to create 48 units. And this is when we kept telling them, you know, do you want to be the government, the government want to be the landlord and keep paying to build, to manage, to maintain, to pay for the taxes, to pay for the maintenance on all of these type of rental properties, when all you have to do is work with landlords, give them a better uh, toolbox to work with and give them the tools. Because it, after this pandemic is all said and done, if you, if there's no relief in towards helping the landlords so that landlords can help their tenants, then we're going to see the recouping side of things. So if the eviction happens, then once that eviction happens, now we're going to see our, our landlords increasing the rents to get to recoup that cost. So we need to really understand that it's about who is the providers and how can we work with you to do it? Because through this pandemic, it's our shelter, it's our food, it's our utilities, and it's our first responders. This is where our government taxpayer funds need to go in in order to protect the current supply. And I can't say after all this is done, I think our elected officials will start to look at housing uh, a lot closer and hopefully we can just get a minister of housing period because we currently have a minister of municipal affairs and housing. We need one minister to deal with this because we've always had a crisis. This is now chaos and it's going to be even more catastrophic when landlords look like the mean people when the landlord and tenant board opens up again and we have to evict the people not because of their hardship but even for us deferring our money and our utilities and our our insurance you still if it's three months if it's six months that money still needs to be paid and if landlords are trying to get work out a payment plan with their tenants now or work out a payment plan when they finally do get to the landlord and tenant board, you can see evictions now lasting 18 months. Now, can our small to mid-scale landlords deal with that burden of taking care of the tenants, and, or are they going to sell it? Are they going to sell it to a oh, home? I'll, I'll, I'll answer that question for you right now, because we, we, like my group, we're responsible for the sale of over 600 properties a year. 80% uh, mm -hmm. of our client base are investors, small and medium investors. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. The, 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 the units, because of the pricing of the market and the, and the constrained supply, the prices were already too high, meaning the investor had to settle for a very small amount of cash flow and depend on the market progress to kind of make their investor goals happen. In this case, if that cash, if the rents don't come in for one, two, three, six months, depending on how this, how long this goes, they are most definitely not going to be able to sustain their units. No, and it, we have money that's going to come from the elected officials. They're talking, Justin Trudeau is talking about his EI benefits. We're getting more money for child tax. We're getting more money for GST. But in reality, we're caused so much panic in the unknown that people are wanting to not take that money and pay rent and groceries and what it's, it's designed for. They might need to hold it because they don't know. And, and it's only right that they don't know, that they don't have that rainy day fund for tenants. And then on the other side, we've had landlords who have been dealing with the landlord and tenant board and with a non-paying rent already for eight months, and now their rainy day funds are wasted based on the problems that had had come before that, and now all their evictions are on hold. What is what is you know what? Let me ask Bobby a question. Bobby, what are you doing today uh, with the thirty doors that you manage? Have you called? Uh, your clients that you're property managing, what is the strategy that you're deploying right now? What are you doing yeah. with your properties? It, it starts with the tenant, right? This is a like a customer service relationship, and that's the bottom line. Um, we've reached out, and we're trying to just be ahead of every single thing that we can be. We want to know where our tenants are at with job layoffs, with job security in general, 
We want to know that they do have a bit of a reserve so that we can help them through the first 30, 60, 90 days if that's what it's going to take. And then as new things are released from the government, just in general, we're placing those links into their hands so that they can be then ahead of the game. When it comes to the other side of this though, uh, investors are scared. And I think that it's rightfully so. There's movements out there saying, just don't pay your rent, just don't. Uh, and I mean, it's we need to find some sort of way to calm some of these things. And it's gonna happen through communication. Um, that's just the belief there. What I'm trying to tell the investors that I manage properties for and what we're doing ourselves is just consolidating all funds that we can. So we work towards having a vacancy budget, a repairs and maintenance budget, and we're consolidating those to see where we're at and how long those things can last us before we need to make any particular decision. But it is my greatest fear that we then take doors away from the, the supply as it is currently. Um, I don't think that it'll come to that. I hope that it doesn't come to that. But the stark reality is, is that it can come to that. Right. And what is the psychology of the tenant right now? Are you finding people are still pretty positive? Are they terrified? How, how, the people that you've spoken to, uh, what is their, uh, where, where is their head at? How are they feeling? As well, human thank, Yeah, thankfully. I mean, we've always had good tenant relations. It's, it's how I pride myself on running that particular arm of my business. Um, so people are open with us. Uh, there's fear. They don't know where they're going to land. Uh, I had a conversation yesterday with a, a young guy who, who believes that he will lose his job. And perhaps that's, it's a little bit of fear mongering in the, in the marketplace that's happening, but that's what his fear is. So we're there to uh, enlighten. We're there to help him feel better about what's going on. And I do want to ensure these people that they're not going to lose their homes, but, but without help on our end as well, um, I, I can't guarantee something like that. Kayla, I'm, I'm going to turn this back to you. Um, what do you recommend Ontario housing providers, Ontario landlords need to do today to lobby help from the government? Should they be, uh, is there a way to organize people? Like, what is it we're actually looking for? Are we looking for a rent back by the government uh, where the bank actually comes in and facilitates? Uh, if, you're, if you're a tenant, you, you have to pay your rent, but if you cannot, please provide this paperwork to the Ontario Rent Bank and we'll give you a subsidy. Like, what, what is it we're actually looking for uh, in your personal view or in your association's view? What are we looking to accomplish here? To keep the supply happening and keep the, the taste of rental, long-term rental units in the, in the mouths of these investors to keep them because not everyone wants to be a landlord and not everyone's cut out to be a landlord. So we have to cease the fact that there's a lot of risks out there before the pandemic and there's even more of a risk now. We have to get the funding, which we have rent banks right across uh, the province now for tenants who are in hardship. They can't pay you rent, you direct them into their, into their agency see sometimes they're called rent banks sometimes it's called lutherwood but they're there to help tenants guide them through their finances to see if they qualify it if they do they direct the money to them we have the government coming out with different type of programs you know saying it's rent and groceries but they have to have a bigger fund put aside for the rent portion and it has to come directly to the landlord so that we can keep people um, from dealing with the panic, knowing that there's a roof over to their head, but we need to be able to work with our networks because it's not about me contacting the elected officials. This is about teaching our members in the group, teaching other people, other networks on how politics is really running this in industry. And we know with their involvement and what they're currently, how it's currently um, the policy are it was already damaging to the housing industry creating that supply and demand issue we need to give them the understanding our elected officials need to say we need to protect our housing stock we need to support our landlords yes it is a business just like any other business right now is taking a hit but we have to understand that we're not about you know removing the eviction order right now people need to stay in their homes we don't care for that you've taken that over but at the same time they need to be able to say here's the compensation because the government has landlords the private landlords working for the government with no compensation well, and we want to work with our people and not everyone's bad but sometimes we're going to see ourselves in a very hard spot after this as can 
can we survive the pandemic and can we survive the 18 months that could potentially happen through trying to evict someone through the landlord and tenant board? Yeah, so and, and I think getting more generic, no generic letters. This is about your personal letter, your understanding, because we need to get our taxpayers on the go with this. Because in reality, taxpayers are paying for government housing. We're paying for shelters, emergency shelters, more police service. We pay four hundred four hundred dollars a day to keep someone in the hospital because they can't find accommodations for the people living in the hospitals. The overall uh, housing crisis that we have, this is not just landlords, this is what we pay as taxpayers now to certain type of programs that are out there that are already at their wit's end. So, so I, I think the bottom line is this, um, people have a misconception that tenants are always uh, the victim. Um, tenants are our clients and our lifeline. We respect and we love our tenants and we take care of them. And Ontario, I can say very proudly, has some of the best housing on the globe uh, in our rental stock. Mm -hmm. If people, if people want to research it within two minutes, they can see rental properties in other cities uh, across both the industrialized and first world um, and uh, in countries that are coming up and everything else. Ontario, I can tell you, has some of the best housing. Ontario has some of the best housing providers. And uh, the worst landlord in Ontario, I can tell you without a doubt, and this is by no means um, uh, uh, something that I'm proud of to say, but our community housing is despicable. It's ran like a joke. Um, it is underfunded. It is consistently misguided and ran like complete crap. Uh, for lack of another, for of any other, because I've been to a million community housing projects. And when people call them projects in the bad sense, they truly are. Mm -hmm. and, the, and there is nothing like it across Ontario other than community housing in that state. But you know what we also have to consider? I, I couldn't agree with you more. You can see me nod and I, I just really get into it because of the fact that we have that development of 12.7 million dollars for, for 48 units and we keep giving the government a sample and said hey instead of creating your own and having the land gifted from a church to a developer why don't we give homeowners seventy thousand dollars it's on the high end but let's work ourselves and we could do even fifty percent but let's give them seventy thousand dollars and say create a secondary suite no guidelines no stipulations it just has to stay a rental you now put 180 one units on the market and you now just provided income for 181 homeowners so it's a win-win situation now the government doesn't have to deal with the maintenance they don't have to deal with the management they don't have the they're getting taxes you're now created created a secondary suite so your taxes of that property now will go up there and you really created a tenant pool across the city inside the best areas elevating the diversity inside these communities as opposed to creating these project ghettos where you have everybody from a specific background all in, in one instead of being inspired and lifted they are stuck inside a, a place where nobody wants to be you got it I couldn't agree with you more um, and now let's let's say the protection side because we're, we're always greedy landlords no matter which way you can talk to your blue in the face to some tenants and they will always say you're the greedy landlords and then we have our great ones we have our great ones but if we look at that we have bad landlords and we have to talk about that and normally the bad landlords are usually the ones that are not putting any type of maintenance into the rental property. But there's guidelines for that. We have one, you have the RTA and the LTB is there for tenants to apply to the Landlord and Tenant Board. They get to pay $53 to file an application and landlords are now being charged $200. But if you don't want to wait for the Landlord and Tenant Board to deal with your maintenance, that's fine. You can call bylaw and bylaw sends in their inspector. They, if they come in an inspector unit, it could be about mold, but they're looking at everything else. It's not just the mold they're looking at. Now they create a worksheet for you to complete this. And if you don't, they're gonna come in, they're either gonna fine you or they're gonna be putting the work into the place and putting it to your property taxes. The, pro the, the protection is there to get these, to have for these tenants. And when we create the supply, we can now not have the tenants feeling that they're trapped with this slum landlord. We can now let them go. 
If they're a slum landlord and you want to leave them high and dry on their rent to, to go elsewhere where you're going to pay your rent and you're happy there, you know, there's a system in place to, to deal with the slum landlords. But when you have a tenant that is abusing the current system, that is where we, we, we get ourselves into trying to protect all parties because our good tenants are suffering because of the bad ones. And I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I'm going to ask a, a couple of you a, uh, one last question. Bobby, I know you wrote a really comprehensive letter to all your tenants. Um, am I able to make that available to our listeners? Absolutely, 100%. Okay, so, so, so send that over to me. Uh, if anybody has um, the need uh, for some guidance, uh, Bobby uh, is going to share the letter that he wrote to his, um, all his uh, tenants and his clients tenants uh, which kind of just outlines um, how are you where are you at do we need to talk are you going through hardship it's basically a letter to open up communication channels and give the tenant a perspective of what we're going through as landlords that we have bills to pay we're going to maintain your property if you have any troubles during these times understand social distancing is key so we're not going to be able to send a plumber in tomorrow morning uh, we're going to have to make sure that you're not home for them to be comfortable to come in. So basically it outlines, because I read it and it's awesome, it outlines a little bit about the process that we have to go through right now as landlords to get your property serviced. Um, and it opens the channels of communication. If you are, as a tenant, going through a hardship, um, not every landlord uh, is a greedy, gross landlord. 90% of us, uh, like, the, like the rule 90-10 in everything, 90% of us are human beings that understand your situation as a tenant and uh, we just hope that you can understand our position because we're not big corporations with uh, any back nets to catch us when we fall until the government does something we're we're going to be left hung to dry and uh, we're going to be at the mercy of huge fees from the banks and whatever it is they're going to do because i can assure you the banks will never lose through all this um so thank you bobby for that if you are interested in the letter just uh, shoot us a quick message and we can send it to you via email uh, we also might be able to post it on our site, so we'll see how about that. Uh, Kayla, how does one get involved with Ontario Landlords Watch? Tell us, how can you be reached, and uh, what, what is the, the ultimate goal here? How can somebody reach out to you? So we have our um, Ontario Landlords Watch members group. There will be some questions that we'll ask, uh, how did you find out about us? Make sure that you were uh, stating that you heard us from the, the RC, uh, REC Canada so that we can get you into the group a lot quicker and following us on our, our Instagram and Ontario uh, ONT Landlords, as well as our page. So every time something is happening, this is about where we can inform you of what's happening and how you can get involved so we can teach you on who to contact and how to contact them and what to say. Um, and if you stretch the message out to your network, this is about about landlords being an easy target for the government to put their responsibility onto a private investor we need to make sure that we're reaching out to our contacts uniting ourselves as a united voice and getting ourselves respected as a necessity and having the government's backing when we need to show support to our tenants because we're all in it together um, I, I couldn't agree more uh, I want to thank you so much on this call um, I, I hope all the best uh, to you and your families from the pandemic perspective. Stay safe, keep practicing social dis uh, distancing, uh, and I hope we all come out of this whole. Uh, obviously, human lives and, uh, and health comes before anything we're doing, but it's really hard to stay indoors thinking of all the things that can happen as an investor, as a landlord, as a tenant, when you don't know when your next check is gonna come from. Um, I wish you all the very best. Uh, and I hope uh, well. maybe we'll we'll do a little update in the next two three weeks uh, as to government conditions if anything has changed. But until then, again, thank you. My name is Simeon Papa Elias, and this was an REC Insight. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you, guys.